What's going on guys? Steven Turner here with Turner Fishing. If you're like me, it's becoming early fall. If you want to catch more of these, then stick around. You don't want to miss it. Smash that thumbs up for me and let's go figure out some early fall into summer. <laughs> What's up guys? So what we have here, I pulled out an avionics and I'm just gonna go quickly over my process of fall as I relay the clips and stuff. So I get there, it's about 6.45, is the sun's just now coming up. And I put in over here at Black's Bridge. Right here. So in, in the fall, like, the shad is pushing back to the creeks. So you're going to have, you know, there's three sections of a creek to me. There's a front, front half, a middle half, and a back half. You know, the back half being all the way in the shallow. So, to me, me putting here at Black's, the best place to start for me is right here. There's two creeks feeding into this cove right here. So, I take off from Black's, I get to this point right here, and I start graphing. Now, as I go around this point, I mean, I find a couple balls of bait fish. There's some gars over here on this point. So, I start fishing here. Now, the reason that I start at the front is because we've only had a little bit of cold weather. We haven't had a lot of cold weather yet. And I know that they're pushing in from me fishing last week that there were balls of bait back in pockets because basically all they're doing the bass is coming out from out here in the deep water they're pushing back the bait and they're gonna push it all the way to the back of this creek now if you find like a pocket like something like this just I mean any little pocket I mean you can be going down the bank and every one of these pockets could potentially have a ball of bait that a bass are pushing now you could be there at the wrong time you could be there at the right time you just it's you just got to find the bait so i started off here there's actually this uh the the second dock right here on the right side of this point has a green light on it so it was running all night so that, that helped me tremendously in the morning but at the same time what we got bit on was exactly what we were looking for so I'll go ahead and play that clip right now and be back in a minute oh, oh I got one off the dock I don't know what it is it kind of looks like a catfish <laughs> it is. <laughs> Catfish on a lip list. Definitely not what I'm looking for. Nice little channel cat. Nice little channel cat. Slimy things. Uh, one thing about a catfish though, it's always a fun fight. <laughs> but see there's a light on this dock and this whole area is just a creek, so I figured I'd start here. See how all the bait just came up? I don't know if y'all can see that, but and that's just from my lipless being down there. I mean, normally you would start with a top water or something, but 
we'll probably switch to that as we move on. fish here but I think it mostly go off. We are South Sea. And there's one going. Alright guys so the last clip I pulled up on this hump right here and there were a lot of fish busting the surface right in here but it was probably 90% gar. I don't know why Lake Murray is just full of gar. <laughs> but we ended up not catching anything here. So I started idling this way. And I went around these ledges right here. And when I got to the mouth of this one right here, there were, it was just eat alive with Shad being chased right in here. But. I, I don't know what it was chasing them, but you just couldn't, they wouldn't commit, more or less. So I'm out here idling around trying to find a good consumption of bait that doesn't have gar on it, which is surprisingly rare, really, really hard. But right here on this point, there's four white herring. I don't, I don't even know if that's the name for the bird, but it's a herring. So maybe this pocket right here has a lot of bait. I mean, that's things you want to look for when you're trying to find, like, good areas. If you see a herring or any kind of bird to play on the, on the bank, on a point, always, you know, idle through it and see, see what they're doing. I mean, they're out here just like us trying to find fish. And they're a lot better at it than we are. So, I'm going to idle through here and see what I can see. Look here, guys. Same cove that the herring were on. Jesus. Come on, come on. All these fish. No bites. <laughs> oh, there was one. He didn't feel too. Oh, he still got. Oh. <clears throat> well, it's a start. Caught him on the black and chrome whipless. Came back here to the back of this creek. And there's a lot of bait fish. Like not at the very back, but like the middle section. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here. See if we can't pick off a few. All right, so we ended up not catching any even though we had loads of bait, loads of bait. I can't stress enough, like, if you got bait, you got fish. I should have stayed. I should have worked it out. I mean, I stayed for probably 30 minutes, but I ended up coming back to the same creek that I started off in the morning. And what I did, I went all the way back, and I did not see a single bait fish, and I out of both sides until I got to this point right here. Now, there was a brush pile on the outside of this dock right here that had a lot of fish on it. Not like a lot of bass, but it had like probably bluegill or something. So I started working here and we ended up finding a few. But as you can see, like with this creek, you got two creek arms right here feeding into this. Now, I've made some videos back here in the spring. It's a really good spot in the spring. I caught them on lipless. Like, early, early spring when it's still cold. Like, it's like warming up. Is it kind of the same situation we're in now? So, they're eventually going to be back here. But, you've got this creek feeding into here. But you've also got another runoff right here. That's feeding right here. 
and it's going right under these dots and to this point and this uh other channel right here swings up, up against this point so I mean it's a, it's a good point and it's got a little bit of rock but not a lot oh, got one on the same point oh yeah, I can't even see me there we go it's a decent little fish oh yeah there we go Oh, nice little chunk, chunky two pounder. You wouldn't even hook, you just had to hook around your gill. But at the same point, I caught that one off the lipless. Put on a little black trick worm, done the deal. I'm gonna put him in a live well so I can take some pictures in a little bit. I mean, sometimes they won't bite the reaction bait, you've got to slow down and get up under them and let them bite. Instead of trying to make them bite. Because once you find like the ball of bait and you actually catch a fish or see fish schooling. I mean they're here. They're not going to leave the bait. You just got to figure out how to get them to bite. There's a bite. three off this point. Not a big one though, but God, he is fat. I don't understand how these little fish are the worst of getting a five watt egg, like wide, wide wire hook in the back of the dang throat. All right, chunky little fat dude. <laughs> well, it's not the same point. Ow. Jeez, you got some spunk to you. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Look at you, man. <clears throat> Ow. A little spunky little one. I'll see what happened is... It's done warmed up a little bit. So what I'm doing is kind of transitioning to more of a summer dock pattern. But it's not completely hot yet. So that fish was on the outside of the dock. But you can tell that just by that catch that they're moving to their cover. Now, I mean, the bait fish still has to be present. They, like... There's still going to be some chasing it, but most of them, they're probably going to push up to where they're normally at during the summertime. So I'm going to go flip some docky docks. And why does that feel like a fish? I don't know if it was or not, but I didn't want to rip, rip that guy's pole out of the ground. <laughs> Look at the guy. <laughs> Get him, guy. <laughs> All right. So I idled around this rip rap and found a pretty decent ball of bait fish. Got that one. So they're not biting a lipless, though. I cannot get them to commit to a lipless. Some make no sense, but I mean, I love throwing a Texas rig, so it really doesn't matter to me. I really need to put another worm on. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Can't believe that guard was trying to come get my little bass, though. But I wasn't gonna stop, but I, f I seen that ball of bait fish on the depth finder. Sometimes that's all you need. Like, if there's bait in that area, there's probably something eating it. Like, I mean, if you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet, you're, you're, you're going to be eating it. So, I'm going to fish around here, see if I can't get another one. 
put another worm on because that one's all messed up because I'm trying to mess with that guard. I mean, that's all it is. I got a 5 watt heavy wire hook with a, a little bitty weight. Y'all know I love fishing with a little weight. And a, a black trick worm. Uh, I got it on 12 pound test for Carmen Trilene. That's all it is. The original trick, trick worm. Now, y'all seen me rig this a million times, but you know, with a with an EWG hook, what I like to do is I like to go like most people. Like, let me stand up. Most people are gonna come out right there, right when they get to that hook. But I'm gonna go around just a, a little bit and then come out. That way, the worm goes over the line tie and up the line just a little bit. Now you can't do that when you have it pegged. And you just fit it snug in there. And let me show y'all what that looks like. Like maybe I went I went just a little bit too far, but it's fine. But to me that presents a, a better natural presentation than what you would regularly do. Now if you're pegging and flipping cover, you know, do it the normal way, but that's the way I like to do it. It gives it, a, to me, it gives it a more natural fall. And when I hop it on the bottom, it just looks better. All right, so basically the, the riprap I was fishing was right here. And, I mean, I, I catch a lot of fish on this riprap, to be honest with y'all. I, I showed y'all in the my spots or whatever, but it's always worth a try. So I ended up coming going here. And I stopped at Black Bridge and idled through the first two pillars and found a lot of bait fish and a lot of arches under it, which I, I figured were stripers. So I, I tried to fish for them. I didn't catch any, didn't catch any. Ended up going down the bank right here to this point. Didn't really see much action at all. And then I came over right over here where this hump is. And... I kid you not, you look in the water and there was so much bait fish, I could probably take a big shovel and fill my whole boat up. So I put on, I mean, these are pretty good size shad. Like they're bigger than the, the rattle trap I was using. So I, I ended up, just, I just kept throwing and throwing out. Like I knew something would hit it and eventually it did. I got a good one. Finally. <clears throat> There's so many bait fish right here. Oh, I got a gar. <laughs> Give my rattle trap. Give it to me. Give it to me. There we go. Oh, he took it. No. <sighs> oh, well. Wasn't but like a $3 one from Academy anyway. They're a fun fight, but God, they're annoying. All right. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm talking about. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, fat for you. Oh, he ate front treble too. <laughs> well, he swiped at it, I guess. Look, look. Oh. I like your boat, buddy. I like that. That's cool. I bet so. 
Hey, you need to kill all the gar you can. You need to kill all the gar you can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just had one break me off over there. Everywhere. Everywhere.